Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to teach you the basics of classes in C++. So classes work very similarly to data types, so just like you have integers and strings or booleans, you can also have data types that you define yourself and that have their own properties. Now why would you use classes? Well imagine that you're a teacher and you need to store information about your students. So you could create different students by saying string s1 equals Mike string s2 equals Maria, and so on. Now, you can probably tell why this is going to be a problem, right? You're just going to create a bunch of students. You're probably going to store a lot of information about them, so not only the name, but the age, the grade, and whatever. And this is just going to turn your code into something really messy and really unreadable. Now, luckily for you, you can just use classes. So I'm going to delete this, and in here, I'm going to say, class student and in classes after you're ending curly brace you have to add a semicolon to denote the end of your class and I'm going to say string name and int age so all of my students are going to have a name and an age and when you define variables inside of a class like this these are going to be called attributes of this class and now in order to create a student we're going to do this just as a normal data type so if you wanted to create an integer, you would say int number equals zero. So you would say that this is an integer first, specify the data type, then say the name of the variable and then its value. So classes are exactly the same thing. You're going to specify the type, which is going to be the name of your class, and then the name of your variable. So student, like this. So now we've created a variable called student of the type student. And when you create variables, of which the types are classes, these are going to be called objects. So we've created an object called student of the class student. And now I can access these attributes from outside of my class by saying student.name equals to Mike, for example. And then I can see out the student.name like this. Now, as you can see, this is giving me an error here. It's saying member student name is inaccessible. That's because when you define attributes inside of your class, those attributes are only going to be accessible from inside of your class. If you want to access them outside of your class, you need to turn them into something called public. So I'm going to say public with a colon, and I'm going to indent this. And now both of these attributes are going to be public attributes, meaning we can access them globally in our program. So now notice that I'm not getting that error anymore. And if I run this now, this is going to output the name of my student, which is going to be Mike. And I can also do the same thing for the age. So I can say student at age equals 19, for example. And here I'm going to see out an empty space first, and then student dot age, like this. And if I run this now, this is going to give me first Mike, which is my name, and then 19, which is my age. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, okay, but like, how is this different from what we were doing before, right? We're also creating students, then we're giving them names, and we're giving them ages. Like, it's the exact same thing that we were doing before. Well, inside of your class, you can actually create functions that automate, that automate these stuff for you. So I'm going to delete this, and in here, inside of my public statement, I'm going to say set name. There's going to be a void. And in here, I'm going to say my name is equal to Mike. Notice that I don't have to say student.name because now my name is inside of my class up here. So I don't need to specify that this is from the student class. And I'm going to say see out my name like this. And now I can call this method. I can say student.setName. And if I run this now, this is going to output Mike. And I can do the same thing for my age. So I'm going to copy this here, and I'm going to say set age. I'm going to change this to be age, and instead of Mike, I'm going to put this 19, like this. And I'm going to say student.set the age. And if I run this now, this is going to give me Mike, and then 19, which is my name and my age, like so. Now I can make this even cooler by passing here a parameter, which is going to be string name, and I'm going to set my name equal to name. Actually, let me call this student name because since our attribute is already called name, this can cause collisions. So I'm going to say that the name is the student name that we're going to pass in here. 
And now down here in my set name uh, method, I need to pass in the student name. So I'm going to say Mike, and I'm going to run this now. And this is going to output Mike and then 19. And if I change this to Maria, and I'm actually going to delete this H like so, and I run this now, this is going to output Maria, which is the attribute that I've passed in here, the parameter that I've passed in here. Okay, so these are the basics of classes. We've learned how to create a class, how to create an object of that class, how to create attributes in methods, and how to access those methods and attributes. So these are the basics of classes. I hope this was easy to understand. If this was valuable to you, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.